corn tortillas. Let's get started. Okay, so today I will be using maseca. Maseca is basically an instant corn flour and it comes in a bag like this. And my recipe is basically the recipe that comes on the back of the bag. It's two cups of maseca to one and a half cups of water and it makes about 19 corn tortillas. Why 19 and not 20? Not sure. So I'm going to shoot for a dozen smaller taquito size corn tortillas today. And I'm also going to experiment with something. If you've seen my flour tortilla video, you know that I like softer tortillas. And if you've tried to make your own homemade corn tortillas, you probably discovered that sometimes they come out kind of hard and dry and break when you try to roll them. So for the sake of testing out a more pliable recipe for a corn tortilla, I'm going to do two variations. One batch of corn tortillas will be just the traditional way you would make a corn tortilla. The maseca, water, a little bit of salt, and boom, that's it. The next one, I am going to add coconut oil. And let's see if that actually helps with a more pliable, softer tortilla. I don't know, it's worth a shot. Oh, and this is another important tip. When you're measuring out your maseca, loosen it up first and then take a big scoop and level it out with your finger. And that gives you a more consistent measuring of the maseca. Because if you pack the cup too tightly and then you add the ratio of water to it, you're gonna find that it's a drier dough. So that's something to think about. So now what I'm going to do is just mix up both batches of my corn tortilla masa or my dough. So here to my one and a half cups of maseca, I'm adding a half teaspoon of salt, and then I will be adding two tablespoons of coconut oil. You could add butter, you can add oil, you can add ghee, you can add another version of your favorite fat, lard, or shortening. I'm adding coconut oil, and it's going right into the maseca, and I'm just going to mix it up with my hand. Now that that is mixed, I am going to be adding one cup of warm to hot water. You at least want it warm or as hot as you can take it. You don't want to burn yourself, but I find that a warmer to hot water just helps saturate the maseca because it is very dry and it's going to soak up any water you add to the bowl quickly and you're going to find yourself with a crumbly dough and the texture or the consistency that you're looking for in your masa or your dough is very moist and soft so that is what i'm doing and even if you find it dry after adding a cup Add a little bit more, just like my flour tortilla video. Add a tablespoon of water at a time until you get the right feel or the right moisture level to your dough. And again, you want a nice, soft and moist dough. Okay, so now that that is all combined and mixed, I am going to cover it with a damp paper towel and move on to my next mixture. And that one will be the more traditional mixture where it's basically maseca. I'm going to add some salt, basically the same amount of salt, one and a half cups of maseca, a half teaspoon of salt, and I'm just gonna give that a mix. And then I'm going to add one cup of lukewarm to hot water again the hotter the better in my opinion maybe it actually doesn't work i don't know but that's how i do it so i'm just going to give this a good mix and do the same thing once i'm done mixing it i'm going to cover it with a damp towel
Okay, now that that is also mixed and combined, I am going to now place a damp paper towel over it and just allow these to set until I'm ready to start making them. I don't know if allowing them to rest is key. I, I will be honest, sometimes I'm in a rush and I'll make corn tortillas and I'm like, okay, it came out, it's fine. But maybe just to allow the water to saturate more into the masa, maybe let it rest for about a good 10 minutes. Okay, so moving on to the tool I will be using. This is a typical tortilla press, and I'm also going to be using a gallon size Ziploc bag cut on three sides with the exception of one, and th this is what I'll be putting my masa dough ball in between so it doesn't stick to the tortilla press. Okay, let's get into cooking methods. Today, I will be using two cooking methods. One will be my nonstick griddle. I will be putting the temperature probably around 400, between 375 and 400, the highest heat, because you want it to get hot. And because this is electrical and it just has the wand that inserts, it's not really a consistent even heat, but it does help when I have to make a lot of tortilla. So I'll be using this. But later I'll also show you when using my cast iron skillet, which is basically what most comals are made out of. It's that cast iron heavy duty, you know, metal. So here I am separating my masa into a dozen dough balls. And again, the recipe um, ratio of ingredients that I'm using will give you a dozen taquito small corn tortillas. You know, the little taquito tortillas that are like the palm size corn tortillas. These are not large eight inch corn tortillas. And if you do want those, you would just divide your dough balls into six to eight or just double up the recipe and you'll have a good size corn tortilla and make a dozen. So here I'm putting my dough ball right in the center of my plastic, covering it with the other side of the plastic and giving it a firm press. And it's as easy as that. You could use two pans, two plates or a tortilla press. Those are options. So I'm just going to gently peel it off of the plastic. And yes, I accidentally ripped part of it. Just press it back together. It's okay. And then right onto my griddle. Okay, so I'm going to let these cook probably about a minute on each side if I had to time it. I Sometimes I make these so quick, I don't even time it, but it was probably a minute on each side. And when you flip it, you'll see that it does get a little golden brown. And I will also mention this. I've seen tortilla videos, and I've actually seen people make tortillas where they get nice and puffy and they puff up. Good on you if you can do that. But I really, when I make my tortillas, and I make them a lot, I don't get that puffy effect that I normally do with my flour tortilla. So I don't know what's going on where they get a nice puffy tortilla. I wish I knew the secret, but the tortilla will taste good with this recipe. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and start making them on my cast iron skillet. And again, I'm just showing you different ways that I make them uh, in case you have questions on, oh, I don't have a griddle or I have a pan or I have a comal and that's what I use. Well, yeah use it use what you have i'm a huge advocate of using what you have to put a meal on the table no one says you have to have fancy expensive ingredients because sometimes i don't and i can make a tasty meal so when you come to my channel just keep that in mind if you don't have the exact ingredients to things and have substitutes by all means use them and make it your own because at the end of the day it's what's coming out of your kitchen and feeding your family and i am all for that so I wanted to show you the level of heat that I'm keeping my cast iron skillet at, and I brought it up to a gradual heat on a medium heat, never high. If you put it too high, it's gonna burn your tortilla. So keep it at a medium heat.
Okay, last tortilla is done. And as usual, I just use a plate lined with aluminum foil and paper towels to keep my tortillas warm. And I will say, keeping them nice and bundled does help retain the moisture and keep them pliable. So now for the test. This one is the traditional corn tortilla and this one is the one I added coconut oil in. So I'm gonna do the whole fold and bendy test and see which one breaks and folds. So this is the traditional one and it did pretty good. It didn't break. It does feel a little coarser and drier. Now this is the one with the coconut oil. And guess what? It's breaking and tearing. That really didn't work the way I thought it would, but you know, this is why we test things. But I will say it does feel softer. But see, as I roll it, there again, it's tearing. But look, I rolled my traditional corn tortilla and it didn't tear. So now for the taste test. And when tasting a corn tortilla, at least in my home, we like butter. That's the way we grew up. We would put a little butter and a warm tortilla, whether it was flour or corn, and sometimes that was a meal. So this is the traditional corn tortilla, and again, I'm not having a problem rolling it. It's not tearing, and it tastes good. Now, for the one with the coconut oil. I'm going to do the same thing, a little bit of butter, and then I'm going to give it a taste. But as you can see, it did tear. It's already tearing down the middle, but it really does feel pliable, more pliable and softer. So as I'm rolling it, you can see that it's tearing, but I'm gonna give it a taste. And it is just as good, and it is really soft, but it tore. So those are two variations you can try, but I think I'll stick the traditional way. It seemed to work a lot better. As always, the recipe will be located in the description box below. So I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it and thanks for watching. Hey guys, you can click on the video icons for more recipes or you can click on my picture icon to subscribe. Thanks for watching.